so much of what we are experiencing in the cries to for freedom and to dismantle racism uh, involve the racialized violence and terror that have been visited upon black and brown people. And when we think about the origins of racism and of colonialism, not only in the US, but all around the world, it does, uh, the origins of that are always rooted in the displacement of uh, violence against indigenous, indigenous people. So we can't have a conversation around unpacking racism, the history of racism, unless we're willing to go back to the origin story of how settler colonialism and the ways in which uh, indigenous people are taken from their land, exploited, harmed, so that uh, new empires can be built. This is a part of what we must contend with. So I want to start with you to take us back to that, to help us to understand um, not only in the U.S., but also in the United Methodist Church, how this I idea of settler colonialism have, has impacted us historically and what it means for the Christian witness. Why do we need to be looking at this history even now? Well, I'd like to begin by talking about what we mean by settler colonialism. In the U.S., um, the colonial um, ambitions of... Um, the quote unquote founders of the United States um, looked to permanent settlement. They were um, intent on making this land uh, what they, they termed the, the new Jerusalem, the new promised land. And as such, when they encountered indigenous persons, they were cast as uh, the Canaanites to the Euro-Christian foil of um, the, the new Israelites. So there was this whole narrative of conquest. And um, in, in order to do that, you had to displace the indigenous people to such a degree that their humanity was pushed aside and that the Euro white Christian, often male ideal citizen became the norm um, for, for what it means to be uh, a quote unquote American. Um, we even see in the Declaration of Independence that they're um, one of the reasons in which they are founding this, this wonderful nation is be, to defeat the, the merciless Indian savages that they've encountered who are warlike and unable to um, function um, with the same kind of humanity that, that is known in um, Euro, Euro, um, European Enlightenment tradition. Um, this goes all the way back to um, an understanding of the need for separation of church and state and yet totally ignoring it. Um, the original um, Spanish invaders looked to uh, the Pepe Bull from 1493 in which Alexander VI proclaimed that um, any, anyone who was encountered who was, was not a Christian king, um, those lands became subject to um, the Christian Catholic Church and could be seized. Um, in the process, native bodies were also seized <coughs> for, um, for genocide, but also for slavery. Um, Columbus was very much interested in um, lining his coffers uh, through human suffering uh, with native bodies. Um, and then later we see in um, the case law of the US, um, Chief Justice refers to um, savage, the, the uh, the paganness of, of indigenous people as, and that particular bull as a reason for um, 
the U.S. being able to confiscate Native territories, lands, resources, and bodies. And it becomes a justification. Today, um, we have over 500 federally recognized nations in the U.S., uh, Native nations. Each one of those has their own language, their own history, their own cultural practices, their own spiritual practices um, through mechanisms of colonialism and um, wed with uh, narratives of mission and conversion or death. Um, you have many Native peoples who identify as Christian and have no access to um, their own spiritual histories and creation stories and founding beliefs. So within this, I want to emphasize the fact that Native peoples are complex. Um, their experiences are widely, widely underappreciated in the sense of their complexity. Um, but what has been a unifying experience for Native peoples, not necessarily a positive one, has been this sense of displacement, this sense of um, being a stranger in a strange land, and the strange land is your home. Mm -hmm. um, and church is often that experience for Native peoples. Because the church and um, government collaborated in projects of not only um, massacre, such as we see at the Sand Creek Massacre, which was led by a Methodist pastor uh, against women, children, and elderly people. We have the, the long history of boarding schools across the continent in which um, missionaries rounded up indigenous children and youth, um, forced them to practice Euro-American um, cultural practices over their own native, um, were forcibly separated from their parents, they experienced all kinds of abuse, and in some cases, even death, um, all under the guise of um, spreading the gospel. Uh, we still see repercussions of that in generational trauma and Moving into today's time, many of our indigenous people are empathetic and outraged by the um, practices we see still happening in which children and their families who are seeking asylum in the land of the free are being forcibly separated and children are being put in cages on our borders um, and suffering through a pandemic. And, reports of abuse and other problems. Um, all of this is reminiscent of what was experienced in boarding schools and causes many to question um, that allegiance that, that Christianity and has wedded to um, imperial power 